The Elysian Traveler's banner features four heroes from Fire Emblem Awakening. We've got Libra, Maribel, Sumia, and Olivia again, but this time she's flying in the sky. In this banner breakdown, we'll talk about each unit's stats, any new weapons and skills they may have, and a few builds you can try out if you summon any of these units. The timestamps are at the bottom, so let's begin. Libra is an infantry axe unit, he's got an interesting looking weapon in his artwork. I believe it's the Bolt Axe from Awakening, but unfortunately that's not his weapon in Heroes. Before we get to that, let's discuss his stats. Libra sports 40 HP, 35 attack, 32 speed, 28 defense, and 29 resistance. That's a pretty balanced stat line, and Libra can fight physical and magical threats decently well. It's nothing super special, but it means Libra has a lot of build freedom depending on how you want to use him. Now Libra brings with him the Woe Gun, and no it's not Woe Gun. Woe Gun is simply the axe version of Woe Dao and Harmonic Lance, which means it deals plus 10 flat damage when specials proc in combat. This should also work the same as Spring Alphonse's Giant Spoon Axe weapon. Libra being in the permanent summoning pool does mean you don't have to wait for Spring Alphonse to show up again. For a special, Libra has Noontime, which is okay with these types of weapons because Libra will deal plus 10 extra damage, which can mean he gets a little bit of extra healing. Since Noontime doesn't exactly heal for a whole lot, Libra also comes with Renewal, which is fine to keep him on the front lines. His C skill is Spur Attack and Resistance, which is a new combination. It grants plus 3 attack and resistance to adjacent allies during combat. It's a fine support skill if you want to keep it. With Libra's rather average 32 speed, he can benefit a lot from a few speed increasing skills. We find the Woe Gun for speed, take Fury 3, and also the speed plus 3 Sacred Seal, and Libra can pass 40 speed. You want high speed to get more follow up attacks to trigger more specials. For a special, if you don't like Noontime, then Moonbow is the more offensive option that's still on a low cooldown. For Fury, you could swap it with Life and Death since Libra has enough defense and resistance to take the penalty. The B skill slot is also pretty flexible and you can use anything you want like Axe Breaker, Desperation, or even Vantage. Now since Libra has 20 defense and 29 resistance with a high 35 base attack, he could be a good Triangle Depth user. With it, he will be able to fight any blue units, even those scary blue dragons. Axe Breaker is good for coverage in the B slot, but since we aren't using speed increasing skills, Libra might want quicker Post for guaranteed follow ups against foes he can't one shot. I think Libra has the highest chance to get demoted from this group, so if you pull him later on as a 4 star unit, then maybe a cheap build like this can be something you want to give him. Next up is Maribel, a cavalry healer, and before you brush her off, because healers are usually nothing special, you're going to want to pay a little respect. Maribel's stats are 34 HP, 35 attack, 33 speed, 16 defense, and 27 resistance. She ties for highest attack among all healers with Jenny, and 33 speed is only one short of tying for highest speed for all healers. In short, Maribel is a beast. Just to visualize things, Maribel finally dethrones Elise as the healer with the best offensive spread. With 3 more attack and 1 more speed, she is the new colorless mage queen. You can see that Priscilla isn't that bad either, but Elise just sacrifices her HP to be more offensive. Nana and Clarine have the speed, but their attack stats just can't compete. Moving on, let's discuss Maribel's kit. I will save her new staff weapon for last. Her assist skill is Martyr Plus, which frankly I'm still am unsure how good that skill actually is. For Maribel specifically, you're going to want to change that to something else because she is our first permanent source of Dazzling Staff. It prevents foes from counterattacking, so if Maribel stays out of danger, then Martyr loses its effectiveness. Her special is Miracle, which is fine, but you can opt for Heavenly Light or Imbue. Maribel also comes with Staff Valley, which grants 2 times SP for healers. While healers can be tough to SP train, the new leveling system for SP gains has improved their initial gains a lot while you level them from 1 through 40. Okay, so now let's talk about Trilemma Plus. It's got a short story for a description, but basically all you need to know is that it affects the target and any foes within two spaces with a new status effect. This status effect is actually Triangle Depth 3. It sounds kind of odd, but basically imagine you inflict Trilemma on a sword enemy. Then you place a blue unit in their attack range. The red sword enemy will deal even less damage to your blue unit, and your blue unit gains damage because of Triangle Depth. Since the enemy AI isn't very complex, Trilemma can be very effective. However, Triangle Depth and the weapon Triangle is a double-edged sword. If you leave a unit weak to the enemy's color, then they will be in extra trouble if Trilemma affects the enemy. Now interestingly, I think Trilemma can lead to a better usage of Cancel Affinity. If you Trilemma a green enemy and then attack them with a blue unit with Cancel Affinity, you will then cancel out the weapon Triangle Disadvantage for your blue ally so they will now have an even matchup against a green unit instead of the usual disadvantage. It's kind of an interesting tactic and I actually wouldn't dismiss it entirely just yet. I would love to test out Trilemma for myself, but I'm not going to be summoning on this banner, so that's not happening anytime soon. 
So moving on to builds, I'm only going to showcase one build, but it can be tweaked around a lot. Since Maribel comes with Dazzling Staff, you don't have to sacrifice a rare Jenny or Bride Lynn to get the Wrathful Staff plus Dazzling Staff combo. Using Trilemma Plus and 2 Speed plus 3 skills in the A slot and Sacred Seal slot, Maribel can reach 47 attack and 39 speed with cheap investment. That is quite scary since Wrathful Staff turns Maribel into a Colorless Mage effectively. Since Maribel is a cavalry unit, she can also receive Hone Cavalry to become a Terror with 53 attack and 45 speed. I do not wish to run into this in the arena. Now if you have some premium skills, you could use attack and speed push or attack and speed bond for extra damage. You also have tons of options for healing assist skills and again since Maribel has dazzling staff, she should not be taking damage, so Martyrs should be changed for another healing skill like Recover Plus. Maribel can also run the Pain Plus staff with Vantage and Double Savage Blow skills. A little more investment needed, but that's going to be one crazy unit. Next we have Sumia who has been waiting a long time to get into Heroes. She is a Flying Lance unit with some crazy stats. Sumia has 39 HP, 30 attack, 39 speed, 29 defense, and 25 resistance. Clearly that 39 speed stands out and it ties with Legendary Ryomo for fastest flyer in the game. Plus she is now the fastest Lance flyer. 39 HP, 29 defense, and 25 resistance may seem average, but it's actually good considering her base kit. Even her average 30 base attack is somewhat improved by her kit. Sumia introduces the Reprisal Lance Plus, which looks amazing. It's a 14 might lance that grants plus 6 attack during enemy initiations, which is just Fierce Stance 3. You can pair Reprisal Lance with other stance types A skills for a fun enemy phase build. For Sumia, Reprisal Lance helps bring up her decent attack stat to a much better level. It also works incredibly well with Sumia's close defense A skill. Against melee enemies, Sumia will become quite tough to take down and she will be nearly impossible to double with such high starting speed. She can fulfill a pretty decent tank role for Lance Flyers and that's something unique. Her new attack and defense Link B skill is something we've seen before but it's a new combination. Basically, the Link skills require a movement assist skill like swap or reposition to be used on the unit or be used by the unit on an ally. After doing so, the unit and the target will both receive a plus 6 attack and defense field buff. Now if you use attack and defense link on a unit with defense and resistance link, you could buff both the units with plus 6 attack, defense, and resistance. For Sumia, this skill just further improves her tanking potential. When defending against melee enemies, Sumia by herself can get plus 12 attack and defense and plus 6 resistance just from her base kit. To build off of that, we can just add another close defense skill in the Sacred Seal slot. Refine Reprisal Lance for speed for insurance or go for even more defense and resistance to be even tankier. With double close defense skills, Sumia will be a monster enemy phase tank. Normally I would recommend Bonfire here, but it loses a ton of power on the player phase since you aren't getting that extra defense boost. Luna is a safer choice and remember since Sumia is so fast, she can get a lot of follow ups during her own player phase. This build can keep attack and defense link, but it's not a necessity. Good luck taking down Sumia if you're attacking into this build. While Sumia's base kit is incredibly well suited for the enemy phase, she is so fast naturally that you can build her for an offensive role if you want. Slaying Lance plus Luna is a strong combo and refining it for speed and using life and death will ensure Sumia outspeeds many units. Arguably, you could even just go for an attack refine since too much speed can be wasted. Now Sumia's 39 speed is godly for a fire sweep Lance build, but her 30 attack is a little lower than desired. If you do build her for a fire sweep build, then you will want to focus on improving her attack stat through skills and team buffs. Moving on to our alt unit of the banner, we have Olivia, who I will refer to as Flying Olivia for simplicity. Flying Olivia is a flying sword unit with 36 HP, 30 attack, 34 speed, 26 defense, and 23 resistance. Pretty expected for a dancer with decent speed and balanced defenses. Obviously, Olivia shouldn't be your main combat unit, but she can fight when needed. Olivia comes with her own unique weapon called Scold. It works exactly like performing Arts Azura's Axe, which grants plus 3 to all stats to a unit after dancing them. These are considered a field buff, so keep in mind they won't stack with Hone, Fortifies, or Tactic buffs. It's a nice support effect for a dancer, and it's extremely annoying to face in the arena. Besides Scold, Flying Olivia has some pretty good skills. Of course she has Dance, but she also has Chill Speed and Guidance, which are both nice for a supportive dancer. She can debuff the fastest enemy and ferry around allies. Her A scale is new and it's called Bracing Stance. It grants plus 4 defense and resistance when the enemy initiates combat. Unlike Distant Defense or Close Defense, Bracing Stance works against both melee and ranged threats. 
It's a nice skill for super defensive builds and it should stack with the Water Breath Dragonstone weapons for plus 8 defense and resistance during the enemy phase. I think Olivia is an okay user of the skill but she shouldn't be trying to tank a lot of damage for the most part. If you like flying Olivia's base kit then I think it's fine to keep everything and just fill in the gaps. Moombo is a nice damage boost and a buffing Sacred Seal like Drive Attack can help further buff an ally after she buffs them with Scald. Guidance can also be used as a Sacred Seal if you want another skill in the C slot, such as Fortify Flyers for a Flyer Emblem team. As with most dancers, Triangle Depth is a great choice for them. With their lower base stat totals, they can gain some extra damage and protection against a single color, which I think is worthwhile since ideally they should be dancing their allies anyway. It's a nice skill for team building since maybe your dancer can patch up a weakness against a certain color. Wings of Mercy is always a good dancer skill since it punishes enemies for not one round KOing a unit. If you want an Olivia with more combative power, then maybe give her a weapon that can be refined, such as with Wo Dao or Slaying Edge. Overall, this banner has some decent units and introduces some new skills, although we've seen alternate versions of them before. Libra is a balanced axe infantry fighter and his Wo Gun axe is a nice addition. Mirabeau has dethroned Elise as the healer with the best offensive spread, and since she already has Dazzling Staff, she can easily access the Wrathful Staff plus Dazzling Staff combo. Sumia is tied for fastest fly in the game, and her base kit makes her an exceptional melee tank. As for flying Olivia, fly mobility is nice, and Scold is a powerful buffing weapon, but we've seen both of those before. If I had to guess, I would say Libra is most likely the one game demoted. I think this banner is okay, but not a must pull for any clear reason. If you like the characters, then all of them are pretty decent. Personally, I wasn't planning to summon anyway, and that has not changed. Up next is another seasonal banner, and then after that is what I assume is Choose Your Legends 2. I'm looking forward to that one. Also a reminder that this banner lasts for a longer than usual time frame, and the next update is bringing a ton of opportunities to get orbs. I'll be talking about those events and more news from the recent Fae channel in tomorrow's video. Hope you guys enjoyed this video, and I'll see you in the next one.